If you don't heal me, where else can I go? Praise God. Welcome to another Sunday, the 24th Sunday in the year 2020, which is the, 20, uh, the 24th day of May, our month of overwhelming progress. May the Lord continue to move us forward in every way in Jesus' name. So we are moving forward and we are moving ahead. And that's why we want to look into the scripture again today. We have been able to establish through the Bible study on Wednesday that this is a, a, the period of time that Jesus Christ was talking about. And then because he said in the book of Matthew chapter 24, verse 37 and 38, which reads us, As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving marriage, all to the day Noah entered the ark. So Jesus Christ himself started to warn the people of his own time that well, the time we are entering into, and the time at the coming of the, or the second coming of the Lord, it will be like as if a thief is coming who will never in any way give uh, any warning ahead. So if that is true, we are trying to now look into the scripture and we want to uh, heed the warning of the Lord that the time we enter into, what all that happened all around us is pointing to the, uh, to the fact that the coming of the Son of Man is at hand and we need to get ready. And that's why we are considering the topic, run to safety. Run to safety. Let, let your, my, your neighbor tell your neighbor run to safety. Tell the second person run to safety. And in doing that, that we are trying to encourage ourselves. It's a message of warning at the same time that the end is at hand. And we need it to do what? To heed the warning to run to safety. May Lord help us in Jesus' name. I want to read from the book of Genesis chapter 7. Let me read the first seven verses. The Lord then said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and your whole family, because I found you righteous in this generation. Take with you seven of every kind of clean animal, a male and his mate, and two of every kind of unclean animal, a male and his mate, and also seven of every kind of bird, male and female, to keep their various kinds alive throughout the earth. Seven days from now, I will send rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, and I will wipe from the face of the earth every living creature I have made. Verse 5. And Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. Noah was 600 years old when the flood water came on the earth, and Noah and his sons and his wife and his son's wife enter the ark to escape the water for the flood. Shall we pray? Lord, I want to thank you for this opportunity to read your word. Father, as we are about to interpret your word, we ask God that you give us better interpretation. Help us to heed the warning. Help us to prepare for the second coming. So that when the trumpet shall sound, we shall not be found wanting. Father, give us uh, the mind even to change for better, that your name shall be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. So as I said that God will never do a thing without telling his uh, people. There is no way that God will bring judgment upon anyone without uh, forewarning such an individual. And I looked through the scripture and saw a number of places where God actually warned his people before he take action. And if the one is coming to us at the time like this, we want us to take action. We want us to repent of our sins. We want us to enter into the ark of salvation so that when it comes, we, we have no excuse. I'm going to the scripture I saw in chapter 4 of the book of Genesis, verse 7, that where God won Cain, Cain was not happy. Because the sacrifice of his brother was acceptable, and his own was not acceptable. And God warned him, he said, Cain, sin is locking at your door. Make sure you master it, because it was furious. 
He was downcast. He was not happy. But God wants to say, sin is locking at your door. Make sure that you do what? You master it. Sometimes you are jealous. Sometimes you are not happy because of your neighbor. You are not happy about their, their progress. You are not happy about the way they are moving forward. But we, we refuse to understand that is sin in the devil, trying to make sure that he may cause to, uh, to, to be misled. But God warned him. And what happened eventually? Cain eventually killed his brother. But God has warned him ahead of time. I also saw in the, the uh, book of Genesis as well, how God warned the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. In fact, when he was to go and destroy the, the city, uh, the, he, he, he branched and he saw uh, his servant, uh, Abraham, Abraham pleaded there for the city. And he said, well, let me go and see. I've had so much. They have won them so much. Let me go and see by myself. Let me go, go and see, see what people have told me, whether it is true or not. Remember that when they enter into to that city, in fact, it was worse. And God said, well, uh, there's nothing I can do more than to destroy the city. Eventually, God decided to take uh, Lot and the family. He said, let us go. But one thing that amazed me is that in spite of the warning to the entire city of Sodom and Gomorrah, they refused to heed it. In spite of the warning that came to the family of Lot, and God said, move into the mountain. Don't stay in the plain. Remember what happened again? That Lot's wife even looked back. Because, maybe because he was from that city. Maybe because she had so much in that place and they did not want to leave leave behind. Oh, many of us, because of the riches of the world, because of what we, uh, we, we, we think that we are possessed, we, we, we refuse and we take it uh, uh, too serious that we don't in any way want to hear the warning of God. But if we will not be destroyed, even with the people of the world, we need to do what? Run to safety. I also saw in the, in the scripture how God sent uh, Jonah to the people of Nineveh. But they are all. You see that when God sent Jonah just for one day, instead of going for three days, because the Bible told us that the journey around the city of Nineveh will take about three days. But for Jonah, just for, went for one day and people changed. They came hard and the whole city, they, they, they went to fasting and repented of their sin. And God looked kindly upon them. That to tell us that when we, we, we take positive uh, uh, decision, God is still uh, merciful. God forgives sin. Not only that, we also saw that even when the uh, the Egypt were to go through the time of famine, in fact, the Pharaoh may, may not know that was a warning unto them, but he came and they had to invite Joseph come and explain even the, the dream of the king. And when Joseph indeed explain it even to the people, uh, to the, the, the king. King said, well, there's no any other person who, that can do more than do anything thing else, more than this young man who has the spirit of God, who is full of wisdom. And Joseph became even the prime minister in, in uh, uh, Egypt uh, because the, the, the king wanted to do what? To heal the warning of God. So, uh, you now see that when the warning of God is coming, the two ways you can look at it, one, when you look at it positively and you change, you run to safety, then you are safe. Then when you look otherwise, that's when you have yourself to blame. We pray that we shall not in any way be destroyed, even with the people, uh, with, uh, with the wicked and with the world in the name of Jesus. The, so the two sides that are saying that we saw how people on the NFA changed and God saved them. And we also saw how people of uh, Sudan and Gomara, they refused to change and they were all destroyed. And so, so, uh, so many of them, so we can divide them into two. And I want to ask you this morning, to which group do you belong? Are you the, the type that want to heal the, the warning, run to safety? Or you just uh, decide on your own as if nothing is going to happen? May God help us in every way in the name of Jesus. Uh, so in explaining this, I just want us to look uh, at the scripture. Why should the warning come to Noah's world? Uh, when we look into the uh, into the Genesis chapter uh, uh, six, verse eleven to thirteen, is telling us why the reason why the warning came to the world of Noah's time. 
Say now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become. For all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all people. For the earth is filled with violence because of them and surely going to destroy both them and the earth. May the Lord have mercy in the name of Jesus. Bible told us that the earth was corrupt. When you want to consider our whole world today, consider Nigeria today, are we corrupt or not? Right from the followers, even to the leaders, are we corrupt or not? That is one of the reasons why God said he's going to destroy the earth. So our own world today, is it qualified to be destroyed or not? Not only that, what he says again, he said there was wickedness right from their thoughts. Their thought was wicked. The actions, in their action, they were wicked. There's nothing good in them. And that's why God said he's going to do what? Going to destroy them. They were corrupt in their morals because we saw that even when the angel of God came to that place, what happened? What happened? In fact, they were, uh, they were asking, give, give all these people. Uh, that's why they call Sodom. Uh, uh, Sodom, uh, uh, Sodom. Uh, that's why they, they, they got the name Sodomites. Made to make. That is happening in our own world today. That, that men are many men. So, they are corrupt in their morals. And they were violent in their dealings with each other. He said violence has actually taken over even their world. <clears throat> but, in spite of all this, grace came. And I want to tell you that grace has come unto you again today to give your life unto Christ. Because tomorrow may be too late. Next month may be too late. Next year may be too late. In fact, yours may be a little longer. But the big opportunity for you is to accept the Lord Jesus Christ today so that you run to safety and you are secured in Him. May the Lord help you even so to do in the name of Jesus. Remember what the book of Romans uh, chapter 6 from the Philly told us. That the ways of sin is that, oh, but we have grace that is there for anyone that will repent of the sin. So if you still continue in your sin, the wages, the repercussion is what is that. We pray that we will not regret even taking a wrong step in Jesus' name. That God will help you to, to think rightly and to change positively today in the name of Jesus. How do we now run to safety? In fact, God led uh, Noah and his people to take the rightful decision. How do we run to safety? God made an invitation. God made an invitation. He gave an invitation. He said, You should make an ark. Say, Make an ark. And he made an ark. What's an ark? Oh, for those that may not know, an ark is like a boat. Or, or in our water today, it's like a ship. A ship is very big vehicle or water. A big, but it's bigger than many houses. Because inside it, you have houses, you can post load there, you can do so many things. And that's why God has him to build it. He gave us a description of how to do to build, to put all manners of animals, both clean and unclean there. And he was actually on his own there. And that's where the, the, uh, he put everything. He put everything there. And they were there for six months. And they are nothing, eh? they were nothing to lack. They had so sufficiency during that time. They were not in any way disturbed by the, 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 the things of the world because they were there with God. I want to tell you that in another way we can say that Noah has already put an act around himself. Because in spite of the fact that the world was corrupt, it was separate. Bible told us in chapter 6 that we, we read, he said that, uh, that uh, Noah was a righteous man in verse 9. He said Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time. That means he was living among the world, but did not belong to the world. I want to ask you, what is your principle? You cannot be there and join them. If that is your principle, then you are no longer part and parcel of the world that God expects. Even for Noah, Noah decided to pick an ark around himself. And that's why God said, if you know how to separate yourself, in spite of the wickedness, in spite of the, the, the fathers around you, then you will pick that ark even for you to be separate. He invited him. But one thing that actually made me to be happy 
in the last verse of chapter 6, said Noah did everything just as God had commanded him. The way God said he should do it, that's the way he did it. Oh, sometimes in our own world today, we have so many diplomacy that we use. Yeah? We have ways of turning the word of God to escape or to show to the whole world that what? That we are doing this rightly. But before God, it is plain. But the Bible recorded that Noah did it the way God commanded him. When God is commanding you, how are you actually doing it? God actually invited him and he did it. And the second thing is that he was has to make an act. So the act you have to make is to make it to be separate. I want to encourage you today, make, a, make an act around yourself. So that you don't allow the things of the world to, to, to contaminate you. Don't allow your thought to be contaminated. Don't let them influence you for evil. Because in the presence of doing that, that's when you are losing. That's when you are turning to the things of, of, of the world. And you know, when you turn to the things of the world, you are sure that destruction is coming. May God deliver every one of us in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> in fact, when people are talking, they will say that uh, uh, act uh, uh, is so old fashioned. Let them call you old school. When you do what is right, let them call you old school. Do it, call you old school, does not take anything away from you. Do things in the way of your Lord, as God has commanded him. That's what he did. And because of that, he was qualified. He was he found faithful with God. God said, This is an act for me. And he made an act. And the third thing that so much got in my heart is that he took a step of faith. When God said in, 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 in uh, uh, verse 1 of chapter 7, he says, uh, Blessed to know, go into the ark, you and your whole family, because you have found you righteous mid-generation. When something has never happened, and he asked you to do it, will you, will you be ready to do it? It may be difficult. Difficult to do. Difficult step to take. But Noah did it. How did he do, do it? Let's see the book of Hebrew, chapter 11. He allowed to know why he did it. Verse 7 says, By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an act to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness that comes by faith. If actually you take the step or special step to submit today, it needs to be done by faith. You don't need to care about what people are saying. You don't need to be bothered with what is all around you. What you don't need to do is to take faith. You build the act by faith. It has never happened. In fact, when we were grown up, the story that we are told is that people are only making jests of Noah. Oh, they say, look at Noah's act. Oh, he's been a hand. I beg, put, uh, move there. I beg, push away from me. Why? Because they do not believe that can be, may be. But because this man, out of faith, believed God. Not only that, that, uh, that what they are, not, they are never seen, he decided to do it that same way. Because of what he wanted to save his family. He wanted to save his family. And in the fear, yeah, Bible call it in holy fear. Oh, how many of us have the fear of God? This man took a step of faith in holy fear. And because of that, he was saved. Grace is coming unto you today again. For you to consider your ways, to consider your actions, to consider your activities, you need to take a step of faith. And the Lord will help you so to do in the name of Jesus. And the last thing that gladdened in my heart is that he says that he did it. Huh? Even in the deeper, he says to save his family. That is, he took his family along. I want to ask you, are you taking your family along? What of your husband? You are here as a wife, where is your husband? You are here as a husband, where is your wife? You are here as parents, where are your children? Oh, children, you are here, where are your parents? He took his family along. So God said it. And all the house, and all the house, that's what he told Noah, and, your, and all your house. I want us to tell the word of God to our families. The families that we are left back in the villages. The family that we are, the, 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 the friends that we have forgotten. Let's remind them at a time like this that the coming of the Lord is at hand. If you don't do it, then 
we are not doing right because we have been made to be what? To be witnesses of Him, both in Jerusalem and all Judea. And this morning, as I'm running up, I want to remind you of some things. One, the judgment of God is close by. The judgment of God is close by. All that happened, all that I was pointing to the fact that the coming of the Lord is at hand. And the judgment they will follow, then we need to run to safety. Let's all run and make a decision. Even right now, pray God will help us to do in the name of Jesus. Let us know that if God is sending another warning unto us, even through this message. And that message is coming to warn us on a pending danger. For the coming of the Lord is very close by. Let us know that it's our faith that requires time like this. Let us believe the Lord. Let your faith carry you to, to carry you to believe and to obey God. We need to obey God. And until you take a step of faith before you can actually fulfill the will of God for your life. Let us know also that the storm is coming. The deluge is also nearby. The question I ask you this morning is that will you allow yourself and your family to be drowned again? Will you allow the coming uh, pandemic, if I can say, to actually carry you away? No, it should not be. And that's why the word of God is coming this morning. Run to safety. And finally, what would you do to bring everybody into the ark around you? People around you. How, what are you going to do to bring everybody into the ark? Noah decided to do what? To build an ark. Go and build an ark. And God told him, told him to go and bring both clean and unclean. Clean and unclean. To, all, to believers and unbelievers. Bring them into the ark. Let them know about it. Anyone who now refuses, even like the lost wife, we have himself or herself to blame. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, I want to thank you for your word you sent to us again this morning. It's a word to remind us of your coming. It's a word of warning. It's a word of encouragement. Father, in those areas where we are lacking, Father, help us even to take the rightful decision in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, to run to safety so that when you come, we will not be caught unaware. We appreciate because you do it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.